Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior Dev Design Evangelist here at Adobe. I don't even know my own title. And joined today by Samantha Warren, Design Director. Is that the Director of Design? I don't know her either title way. either. It can go either way, yeah. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm excited about Adobe Firefly I and making too. really cool stuff, and so that's what what it's all about, right? Absolutely. We're going to make some, hopefully, really cool stuff today. But before we dive into things, big hello, good morning, afternoon, or evening to everyone joining us here live on Behance. We've got Umicorn and Clever and Iode, Sam, Carol. If you are tuning in, in, let us know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've also got Sam and Maureen and Esmer over on the YouTube side, wherever you're watching. Thank you. And yes, we are, so I saw someone, Umicorn, we are in the studio. Yeah. It's been, I think, for me, three years. Oh, wow. Three years since I've been here. That's there we are. crazy. It's, I love being here. It feels so like. You can like, see Paco right over there. Yeah. There's Paco. Yeah. So today is all about Firefly and, and if all goes well, and you're all nice humans in the chat, we're going to be demoing a new feature coming to Firefly. I don't know when, but it's in beta. And I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff coming towards the end of the stream. So stick around for that. We also love to get all of you involved. So as we're going through this process of designing something, it might be an album cover, it might be something, who knows what. Could be a poster. Could be a poster, movie, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, throw some suggestions in the chat. We definitely want to make this a collaborative experience. And with that, maybe let's dive in and uh, give a little bit of an overview of Firefly, shall we? Yeah. Cool. So if you're not familiar with Firefly, it's a generative model that kind of takes all sorts of amazing things from data that has been input into Adobe, and we create things based on your prompts. Um, so it's pretty simple. As you can see here, you start with um, all these amazing images that have been already pre-created by the community. And if you roll over them, you can see the prompts that they use to make those images. Um, and that can give you some ideas to start with, or you can start here at the bottom by putting in your own prompt. I like to oftentimes start with an image already. Um, if maybe you're interested in seeing how you get an effect very similar to um, this particular magical world, for example, wow. you can start with magical wonderland, start to build on it with additional prompts or different uh, different keywords. Using styles over here on the right, you can add different styles to it, or you can start from scratch, which I think we're going to go ahead and do here today. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, so let's maybe start with, um, we were earlier talking a little bit about camp vibes mm. and like uh, like going out in the wilderness and like you know like all the beautiful uh, like kind of uh, scenery you get in a landscape like that so like let's start with the landscape sure. so and while you're doing that Oliver in the chat is asking is the new feature of being able to specify how many legs are normal <laughs> mostly a joke I think coming from Oliver <laughs> however thinking about this new feature that we're going to demo towards the end of the video or the stream maybe. <laughs> I suppose it could be used for that. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think the thing with the, the models are that they grow over time. They start mm. to learn from what people do, and there's always constantly people working on them. So they get better and better over time. Um, I'm seeing really good uh, results with things like limbs and legs these days, but every once in a while you'll get something like, you know, a five-legged uh, dog or cat, and that's kind of what makes this a little bit fun. You don't ever know what you're going to get. It's the serendipity in it all. like, And it gives you some ideas sometimes and sometimes it's a little bit off the mark. Yeah, and we've seen AI change tremendously just in you know, several months. Obviously, you know, there are other tools that have been around for maybe a year or two, and when those tools started out, it was, it was rough, right? So our models are going to evolve, they're going to change, they're going to get better, and um, that's the cool thing about AI. It's just going to continue evolving over time. And it changes every single day. I mean, that's been kind of one of the most exciting things about working on this particular project is that one day you'll make an image and you'll put in a particular prompt and you'll get a very specific kind of rendering of that image. The next day it may get more magical looking or have different lighting effects and you can continue to kind of grow with it. It's sort of like riffing with someone else all of the time, but you're riffing with the actual Firefly product. Yeah. Well, and that's looking pretty, looking pretty good. Yeah, so that was pretty simple. Just putting in a simple prompt like a mountain landscape with a campsite and a fire surrounded by boulders. I think the key to trying to come up with a good prompt right off the bat is to come up with like a few descriptive words. Mm. Think about a particular scene 
or an area or a mood and kind of add as many descriptions as you can to kind of get yourself started in a good way. And sometimes you do get things that are a little bit unexpected or weird. Um, I think one of the nice things about Firefly, for example, is that it sort of starts out with this kind of artistic look by default, but you can also try something a little bit more photorealistic mm -hmm. and see what you get. And I, don't, I honestly have no idea. I've never tried this prompt before. We're going to see what we get here. That's the fun of all of this. <laughs> yes. You just never know what you're going to get. Th you know, thankfully, the uh, Firefly model is trained to avoid certain elements. Yes. Um, so we're probably not going to run into any weird, uh, you know, not safe for well, work hopefully. content. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love the fact that we have on the right hand side over there all these styles and these techniques, which you know, in other tools, you might have to really know the keywords that you're after. And of course, you can yeah. enter, you know, many keywords in the text box at the bottom. But um, yeah, you can just pop open the side over there and choose some stuff. So let's say you wanted maybe this photo here, whether it's either photo or art, but you want to maybe make it a golden hour scene. How would we go about that? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways. You can always add more descriptors to the prompt itself. Or you can use the styles over in the right-hand side. These styles are sort of preset um, configurations that help you to try new like looks and feels. You can um, browse by popular, all, and then there's all sorts of different categories here. So if we wanted to, for example, try and get a little bit more of an artistic effect, um, changing it to art and then going to all, um, you get all of these mm. different styles over here, but you can also change at the bottom the lighting. So you can go to golden hour over here, click that, regenerate. You get a little bit of a different look. Generate, generate, generate. And I think user. what we're going to see is we're going to see you know many of the elements in this uh, piece kind of get a little bit more yellow, a little bit warmer. But I think what's interesting is you can then combine that with a text prompt. So, so Samantha can enter in maybe at golden hour or golden hour photo or whatever it might be, however you want to word that. And we're going to see another different result. You know, the sky might change to more of a, a warmer tone. We might see a sunset or a sunrise or something like that, which is going to be interesting. So I actually changed the prompt down here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit if you guys can see. Um, maybe golden hour. Uh, golden hour time frame, or maybe golden hour uh, evening um, to the beginning of the prompt. I'll go ahead and zoom back out for you all, regenerate, and let's see if that adds a little bit more golden kind of yellow or red color to the scene. Again, we have no idea what's going to happen. We don't. <laughs> there we go. But it really enhanced it. It yeah. kind of gave it a little bit more. So we're, we're we're kind of building and riffing off of uh, our original prompt, and that's what this is all about. It's experimenting. Yeah. Now, what if we want to take this, you know, thinking about maybe the album cover that we might be designing or the poster. Um, let's say you're working with a client and they have a very specific vision in mind. Maybe you don't have a stock photo that looks exactly like they want. What if they wanted maybe like a layered paper look? Oh, yeah. So there's a real, lot of really cool styles over here on the right, and one of them is layered paper. So the first thing I would probably do is give layered paper a try and regenerate it, and let's see what we get from that. And we have a question from YouTube. What are the chances that similar topics will generate the same thing similar to people choosing the exact same topic, same stock photo where you know where it came? That question was kind of all over the place, but I think the, the beauty of you know, this generative AI is you almost will never get the exact same result, right? Yeah. Because of the way the Fusions model work, a lot of the goes way over my head. Mm -hmm. um, engineers can probably explain a little bit better, but these models kind of learn how something should look. Let's say a cat, for example. Yep. Breaks it down into very small, little tiny pixels, and then when someone generates a cat, it creates a cat. Yeah. But it's not it's not taking like a stock image or something that it found on the on the web and just kind of plopping it there. It literally like creates a cat. Yeah, I mean it's that's kind of what makes the AI generative. Yeah. Like AI generally is about um, recognizing patterns and repeating those patterns and building off those patterns. But generative AI actually starts to um, perform in a little bit more of an abstract and unique way. Um, and so there's like infinite possibilities where it starts to actually create unique and kind of serendipitous results because of that. And so that's when you start to get um, really, really unique things. 
And so here you can see with the paper uh, style that we selected over in the right hand corner, you start to get a little bit more of this kind of flat look, almost as if it's layered paper, but there's a little bit more of this kind of perspective involved. That's really nice. The, the top left one. Go ahead and download that for a, yeah. a moment, just so we can maybe use that in our um, our design. And what's happening now is it's applying content credentials, which yeah. is really interesting because um, you know we released content credentials many many years ago, and I think it first came out in Photoshop. And it, when you turn it on, and maybe I'll show this when I'm um, in Photoshop later, but it can track all of your steps. So you know, your work is being tracked. That way, you know, there's no question who owns that work or who created it, right? And of course, in the world of AI, the laws are, I, I can't, obviously can't speak to that because I'm not a lawyer, but things are changing all the time, right? But we're doing our part to make sure that people know that this is an AI generated image by adding on these content credentials. Yeah, I think it's really important that people start to really recognize that it is an image that's generated by AI and not necessarily created from scratch by a human. And that's what the, the content credentials are really doing. It's adding that tagging so that it's embedded within the image and so that everybody knows it's created with Gen, Gen AI. Yeah. And someone in the chat on YouTube is asking, are all the images vectors? So at the moment, they're not. They're rasterized images. However, if you go to the Firefly website, firefly.adobe.com, and you scroll all the way down, there's an in exploration section, and one of them is text to vector. Yeah, we're thinking about all sorts of different possibilities for this technology in the future, and I think text to vector is a really, really interesting possibility. Mm -hmm. um, we have, as you can see, like on that front page, and maybe uh, like, can we switch over to Howard's screen and maybe take a look at some of the stuff that's coming soon? There are all sorts of potential applications for this technology within the current um, Adobe uh, set of tools. Um, you could imagine things like. Um, personalized results, text to vector, text to pattern would be really, really interesting. Um, and so there's like just so many infinite, really, potential results for what we could do with this technology moving forward. Yeah, and a lot of this might sound a little bit familiar, like extend image, for example. We've had content aware fill, we've had content aware, all sorts of things in Photoshop for many, many years. So it kind of falls in that ballpark where if you want, you know, maybe you took a vertical image and you want to make it horizontal. Maybe you can press a button one day and it'll just kind of fill in the rest using all this AI technology, which is super interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And so I see that um, there's a few questions in the chat around um, like how you can use these images and um, whether or not you can use them with clients in the future. Right now, the way it works for Firefly in the beta is that um, there's a watermark on it and it's not for commercial use. Our hope is that by the time this comes out of beta that there is a really clear compensation model for stock contributors in place and that you will be able to use this for commercial use. Yep. Um, and so that's something we're working towards. We feel like it's really, really important that people will be able to do that in the future. But for right now, it's all about having fun mm -hmm. and just trying it out and experimenting. And breaking it. Yeah. <laughs> Which sounds weird, but you know, one of the reasons we release this as a beta, specifically this text to image, um, is so that we can really figure out what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be improved, like human faces sometimes when they're looking at an angle. Yeah. Sometimes they're a bit mucky, but um, you know, our goal is to release tools so that um, you know you can that will complement your existing workflows. Things like extend image, for example, right? This one down here. And by testing out this, the, you know, these features now, it's gonna help us release much better tools in the future. And so if we go back over to my screen, I can actually show you guys, I've um, kind of added a few different things here. By adding layered paper in addition to the layered paper style Ooh. over on the right, we actually get this really kind of artistic look, almost like we've, you know, cut out particular pieces of paper to assemble this new composition. And I'm really digging the way it's looking. I feel like I love the way there's kind of this, this layering and this dimension that's being built and these shadows. So I've gone ahead and downloaded all of these in case we want to go ahead and use them in our future um, composition. Yeah, so it's definitely something to keep in mind, right? The styles on the right hand side will definitely give you one result. But if you want to really push that, then adding keywords into the text box at the bottom, right over here, whoop, well, oh, thanks, Baco. <laughs> right over, back over there. Um, we'll give you different results and maybe kind of what you're looking for. And so if we want to maybe add a few more things to this particular image, let's say um, we really like this image in the bottom right-hand corner. We, there's also this um, feature that we're still kind of working on. It's a, it's a little bit in early stages. But if you go up to Options and go to Use as Reference Image, mm. 
you actually get this potential to be able to regenerate the image and make a lot of little tiny changes to it through prompting um, without changing the, the natural kind of composition of the image. You'll see here on the bottom left, there's this reference image um, kind of like modal that pops up and this slider that allows you to, on the left, make it more like this particular image that you originally started with or on the right, more like the prompt. And so if we wanted to, for example, maybe add some bears to this Ooh, sure. and maybe a stream. It could be dangerous, but fun. <laughs> it could be. Um, so with a campsite, and so we might add, and bears swimming in a stream. Again, I have no idea what I'm gonna get here. Um, and I'm gonna add with a fire surrounded by boulders. We're gonna hit generate and see how that changes our image. And I would imagine with the slider kind of in the middle, we might see what, what you're looking for, right? But then if you move that slider over to the right, you might get more bears or it might kind of refine itself a little bit. Is that? Yeah, it's going to really kind of, it's about weighting the prompt versus the image. And so this is where it gets pretty experimental, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different possibilities. I think what's interesting here is that in all four of the results we got, we got pretty big bears. Those bears are almost as big as the boulders and definitely bigger than the tents. Right. I think if the bear is the most important part of the image, that could be really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and download a few of these just in case we wanna keep them for later. Um, I kind of really like this one here, even though the bear is just ginormous. It's a large bear. I would stay away. <laughs> um, but then go back to our reference image and let's play around with this slider to see how it actually impacts the, the size of the bear and like the composition itself. So if we go back towards the reference image, we're gonna regenerate and see how that changes things. So this should look more like the original image, right? Right, yeah. so no bears at all, no stream at all. So it actually didn't really pay much attention to what was going on in the prompt at all. But if we go back to weighting it more closely to the prompt. Someone in the chat would wants to cuddle that first bear. The first bear? I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know, it, it does ooh. look. <laughs> ooh, we do have some nice bears here. Um, we have. And I will note that a lot of these bears do have four legs. So that is that's go. going for us right there. Um, we do have a little bit more of the bear emphasized versus the campsite. And actually in the bottom right hand corner, as you'll see, there's bears and campsite, but the campsite is now humongous mm. and it's in the middle of a pond. Mm. Um, I mean, it could work depending on the direction you're going. But I mean, I feel like this is something I would see in a dream, right? Like right. this is like, it's kind of a little bit like surrealistic at a certain point, um, which is what kind of makes it fun for making art, right? Like art is all about coming up with new and exciting and experimental things. And so um, you could really sit here and kind of play with this particular like lever um, to change the weight of the prompt versus the actual image, all sorts of different ways. Yeah. Um, I sort of am kind of digging this direction and, and it looks like here that this is both a camp fire and a campsite on fire at the same time. <laughs> well. Um, that could be kind of trippy. I mean, depending on what, you know, if our album cover is for something that's really trippy, it might be a good idea to, to have something along those lines. Um, but I think I'm gonna kind of like chill with this particular image for a while. We've, we've done a lot here and maybe start to experiment a bit more with um, some of the color. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to switch back to the original and maybe start to, to play off of similar themes, but a different color scheme. And I could do this by putting in a new original prompt here at the bottom, or I could also pick a new reference image. I really like the kind of psychedelic colors mm -hmm. here that are happening in this succulent plant, but I, I do want to kind of stick maybe with more of that kind of camping, glamping vibe. So maybe I keep the word psychedelic here and add psychedelic campsite in the woods um, and see what we get from that. This could get interesting. So once all these images are you know, generated, what's, what's the process after that? Do you, you pop them in a, a CC library or how would you kind of navigate that? 
Yeah, so right now, because Firefly is in beta, mm -hmm. you can download it directly to your desktop or download it to your desktop and then plop them in a library. And that's really the easiest way for two people to collaborate together. Yeah. So since the two of us are collaborating together, we've actually started a CC library. Um, I'm having all my images kind of downloaded to my desktop folder. Um, so what I can do is uh, pull open my CC library. So we have one right here that's already started with an image. Um, and we can just start to pull over some of these Firefly images. I love that your downloads are just full of Firefly images. Yes. Well, I do make a lot of Firefly images. <laughs> I can imagine. Kim in the chat is asking, is there a way to see the history of images that you've created? So not at the moment. Um, I believe that's something that would come at some point in the future. But as someone mentioned, Laura mentioned that if you use the back browser, back button on your browser, then you can go back to the images that you have created. Yeah, it, actually, if you go through your history, it's really nice to be able to access some of the, the older ones. Yeah. So like, for example, let's go back here. And it definitely takes us back to this prompt. I'm waiting to see what it generates here. But I believe it's going to generate whatever was in that original. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So if you want to go back, you can always access it via your history. Yeah. Great. What other questions do we have in the chat? So while we're looking for questions, let's go ahead and hop over to my screen. Let's, I mean, I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. And this is the kind of cool thing about this, you know, this collaborative process is you might be working with a designer who wants to create something like an album cover or something like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's say 2,000 by 2,000. Now, of course, if we're going to be printing this, we're probably going to want to bump up the resolution to you know, somewhere between 250 and 300. But for now, we're going to stick with web, and we're going to go ahead and create. And over here, my libraries. We already have the images that have come over, which is incredible. Um, so I can just grab any of these images here. Let's grab this one and see what it looks like. And as you can see, I grabbed an earlier image that I made earlier in the day for a slide deck. So if you want an extra image, there's that rocket right there, there too. <laughs> it looks pretty fancy. So I can just bring that in. Now, of course, um, you know, the aspect ratio was a little bit different. So um, you know, I could create another document that matches that a little bit. But we're going to run with this. And we do have the watermark at the bottom right over, oop, right over there, um, which, as Samantha mentioned, at the moment, these cannot be used commercially. So you know, once it comes out of beta, our hope is to remove that watermark so you can use it commercially. Yeah, so we wouldn't use this necessarily with clients right now, but I mean, if we were making a playlist to share on a road trip or something right. in the future and you wanted to make something fun to kind of bring a little bit of style and uh, two-dimensional uh, atmosphere to the playlist, you could use Firefly. Where were those bears? Let's see. This one I like. The camp burning campfire. <laughs> the burning campfire. <laughs> Why not, right? Yes. All right, I'm gonna make that a little bit larger. Pop that here. Now, I wonder if you can go back and are you able to generate, I want to I show the audience how, um, how you can change the aspect ratio oh, yeah. of the image. Yeah, so let's actually go back to one of the earlier images we did. Um, I generally like a lot of pixels. I like right. to err on the side of more pixels than less. So I usually kind of go up here to the aspect ratio um, area on the right-hand panel, and I automatically kind of go down to widescreen, which is mm -hmm. going to be 16 by 9. But for example, if I was creating something maybe I wanted to share on you know, Instagram and my stories or something that really needed a vertical uh, aspect ratio, there's a portrait, um, which will kind of regenerate the images in a portrait mode, I think is really, really helpful, especially if you're creating images for all sorts of different kind of applications. Oh, and I love this. You see a lot more emphasis here mm. on like kind of the sky and what that would look like if there was this like kind of background. The one on the far um, right mountains. looks really nice. This is cool. So yeah. let's go ahead and download that. And Sarah in the chat is asking, how do you put them into Photoshop libraries? Yeah. So right now, because we are still in beta and we have a lot of work to do, um, you can currently download them to your downloads folder and then you can open up your CC desktop application, which if you have um, CC desktop installed, you'll see the little CC icon in the upper right hand um, bar. Um, and within that application, um, you can actually go to your files tab. And in your files tab, these are all of your libraries. If you don't have a library yet, you can create a new library here. Um, we created a library just before we started the live stream. So we would have a place to throw everything. And you can just drag all the images that you download right there into your libraries panel. Awesome. 
And it's great because it showed up right there in Photoshop for Howard once I downloaded them. It just needed a little bit of time to sync and ended up right there. Yeah. Oh, we've got split screen going on. So, yeah, split screen. So, um, just to kind of walk through some of the other aspect ratios, you can do square. And I kind of just love regenerating and seeing like the new compositions and all of the different aspect ratios. Or just plain old landscape. Ooh, that third one. Oh, you want me to go back? <laughs> no, it's okay. Let that generate. <laughs> What's cool is even if you've gone ahead and regenerated a different aspect ratio, if I'm not mistake, mistaken, if you now go back to square, it should have the exact same images and it should load almost instantly. Let's do it. There it goes. There we go. Yeah. So go ahead and download that third one and pop it this in the one? library. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Okay. No bears, but that's fine. <laughs> no bears. We're gonna go ahead, oops. Although maybe we can add some bears later during our sneak. Hmm. Oh, that could be, that actually could work out very hmm. well pending our sneak. Hmm. So um, as you can see here, I'm just going to my downloads folder, dragging right over into this library panel that was in my files under CC desktop. Um, and it should show up for Howard pretty soon. And there it is. Bam. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on up, and we now have the base of this album artwork. Um, but I would love to hear from the chat, what else would you want to see in an album art like this? We're going for the, kind of this chiller vibe. Uh, we obviously need a name for this album. Yeah, what is the name of this album? Yeah, Roasting Bears, Roast Bears Roasting S'mores. <laughs> oh, I think Umicron's talking about what we can add, maybe. I think um, Bears uh, Roasting roasting S'mores. Roasting Bears kind of sounds like a band. It does sound like a band, but it does not sound like a good experience when you go camping. No, <laughs> but you know what? Let's go with Roasting Bears. Okay. I don't know why, but we're gonna roast it. Roast, Roasting Bears, all right. There we go. Now, obviously this text is kind of boring. What is it? Myriad Pro, not very exciting. Um, so we might want to go for something. So what vibe are we going for? Is it the psychedelic vibe or a chill vibe or? How about like a little bit of like a, a, a rustic glamping vibe? Oh, a rustic glamping vibe. Oh. I don't know what that, I don't know how that translates in fonts, but um, I love fonts. We could also try doing something with maybe text effects for oh, this. Maybe. If we want to try yeah. that. Let, let me hop over here. And I'm gonna go to generate. So we also have these text effects that we can use. So we have text to image, we have text effects. Recolor, I think Paul Tranny demoed this a few weeks back on one of the streams. That's coming soon. And then I'll show you a little bit later something else that might be coming soon. So we're gonna hop in here and, and this is just bonkers, right? Uh, we demoed this I think last year at, at Adobe Max. Yeah, And yeah. people lost their minds, which is really cool. So we might want, um, so down here we can enter text and then we can describe the text effects that we want. So roasting bears. <laughs> um, um, maybe something wooded, like uh, maybe wood. like um, balsa wood or like uh, cypress wood balsa or maybe bark. Wood. Let's see what happens. Again, it's the beauty of AI. We don't know what's gonna happen. I have happen. no idea what's <laughs> gonna happen here. And on the right hand side, we have some sample text effects that we can choose. We also can uh, customize how the text fits, right? So sometimes like popcorn, for example, you might want some of the popcorn exploding outside of the actual text, so you would choose loose, right? But in this case, you might want something medium or tight so that the wood is kind of forming to the actual text. And we have a few different options down here at the bottom we can kind of cycle through based on what we're looking for. So balsa wood seems to kind of give it a little bit of a stringy look, mm -hmm. but if you see up in the upper right hand corner of the sample effects, there's Ooh. actually what looks like driftwood, which has a bit more of a solid feel to it. Yeah, let's try that. Perhaps Fuzzy Wuzzy was a roasted bear. That would explain some things. I like that. <laughs> very clever. Um, yeah, this is interesting. It is very interesting. It's a little bit different and outside of the look that we're going for for the mm -hmm. album for sure. Yeah. But maybe, um... Now, typically, I would probably go to Adobe Fonts. Yeah. And um, I would probably add some sample text up at the top, roast, roasting bears. And then I would just, you know, really br start browsing some typefaces. Oh my gosh, look at all these fonts. I am no. such a font nerd. I love, oh, I I love, love all these fonts here that are all part of the Creative Cloud subscription, right? Yeah. So I probably, for this, for an album cover, I'd probably maybe want a thicker weight. So I can definitely narrow it down there. And these are fun. Which one looks good? 
And there's a million. I mean, right? there's a, a lot of them. I kind of like that one, the second from the left up there on the top. What about maybe, does anybody on the chat have an opinion? Anybody have a font that they've seen so far that they like? Hmm. There's so many. It's like more than 100 pages. I can just sit here for hours. Belly is, <laughs> uh, I've used that quite a bit in some designs. I like how that O has that like negative space that's a little bit off kilter. Yeah, let's try that. That's fine. I'm gonna activate these. All right. And it's gonna be syncing to my Creative Cloud account. I did just sign into another account, so hopefully all goes well. Um, but if it does, I should be able to hop over to Photoshop and grab my text, and there it is. That was fancy. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. That's a nice look. Yeah. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's going to... Sometimes it's a bit difficult to place text over top of a background with lots of different colors, right? So we may want maybe another element in the center. Maybe the, the image here is going to be a nice background image, but maybe we might want something like grab my shape tool, draw it a circle, and I'll just grab a color maybe from here for now. We we'll probably are going to change this at some point. I don't like that. We'll keep it for now. Um, and then in the center, what should we put out in the, in the middle here? In the middle? Yeah, like in the circle here. Uh, we might want to showcase maybe some... I'm, I guess I'm covering up <laughs> a big part of the background <laughs> image. I don't know where I'm going with this, but maybe the chat There are no know. wrong answers. There are no wrong That's answers true. ever. That's what wonderful about art and design. We yeah. can just continue to sort of build on fun ideas. And what's cool is, you know, you can use this generative AI text to image to generate maybe elements. So let's say maybe I wanted a, a fluffy cloud or something to kind of overlay on top yeah. of this. So I can type in something like fluffy cloud. Now if I were, well, if I were to just leave it at this, you know, we're going to get some, well, Ooh. prompt is too short. What about a fluffy cloud? Is that going to help? Probably not. No. Oh, it did. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's not bad, right? But you might want it on a very specific background. Now, in this case, it's probably what I would want, but you can add on a solid blue background. And like Samantha mentioned earlier, when you first generate something uh, and don't really specify the style in the prompt, it's going to give you more of an artistic look, which is really nice, but I might want a photo for this one. It's going to probably give you a little bit more depth, a little bit more shading, mm -hmm. yeah. Looks more like a, you know, realistic cloud. And I can maybe try maybe golden hour. You think it's going to give us a little bit of yellow in there? Maybe some pink? Oh, maybe. Let's see what happens. I feel like it's like unwrapping a present every time you can generate. Okay. No! It's a little bit of a gold tint. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Maybe adding golden hour to the prompt, too, might help. So the, the idea is that I can just grab this image, bring it into Photoshop, and then add it into, ooh, there we go, right? And then maybe considering we are going with more of a artistic design here, I might want to switch this back over to art and see what we get. So the idea I'm thinking is, you know, put a cloud over top of this just to add a little bit more depth to this photo because we do have this kind of layered paper look. Or at least I think so. Or do we switch back to the... Yeah, we kind of yeah, do. It's got a little bit of a yeah. layered paper look, yeah. This is interesting. I don't know if I love it, but that's cool about AI. You can just continue generating something until you do love it. So I can either download it or copy it directly to my clipboard, hop over here, and paste it. Right? And then if I wanted to, I can select the subject. Now, I will add the disclaimer that you know the watermark is at the bottom, but the final image will have the watermark on there. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to extract it, and I can pop it right about here. Oh, wow, you did that so fast. Yeah, select like subject is amazing. That's, I mean, just saves so much time. I would have sat there trying to actually lasso that thing. Oh, my gosh. Remember those days? <laughs> I know. Those are fun. Um, now, maybe I want the, the title to kind of mold to the shape. I like that. Um, so maybe I'm going to grab the shape, grab the text tool. Now, if you move the, I don't know if you can see this, but if you move the, no, that doesn't work, um, the text tool, into the shape, but all on the path right here, it's going to change. So I can go ahead and click on that, and then roasting bears. Now, it's upside down, right? And I think I spelled roasting wrong, which is great. But um, <laughs> if I go ahead and hold down my command key, I think I can drag this. There's a little dot somewhere. Where's There's the dot right there. I can drag it on the inside. I can rotate it around, 
and then I can dive in and correct my bad spelling. Perfect. Now it is a separate text layer, so I can just grab this now and make it bigger. You I can still make have it smaller. an extra T in there. Do I? Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's but I mean, like that may be screen. part of it. Maybe that's part of the the playlist. Maybe. The fact that it's ro roasting. <laughs> roasting. There we go. Oh, I almost did it again. Yep. There we go. So maybe I want might want to dive in here. Maybe space this out a little bit more. Uh, where am I? Here we go. Ooh, that's a bit too much. Maybe forty. There we go. So one of the questions is, is can you ask it to generate transparency, um, like a prompt for the cloud with a transparent background? Mm. So right now in um, text image, that isn't an option, but it's a great suggestion. It's something we should probably look into doing. But you can with text effects. Um, so you can actually add at the um, bottom of text effects this ability to be able to add a color, and you can actually add a transparent background there. Um, so love that suggestion for text to image. We should um, definitely be considering adding that to the potential future features. Mm -hmm. A grizzly bear during golden hour. Let's see what happens. So maybe we might want to put you know a bear as the focus inside of the circle, for example. And maybe we even might want some sort of textured background in this area here yeah. as well. Ooh, that's, that's, not a, bad. that's a pretty nice looking bear. Yeah. It does have an artistic look to it. So maybe let's try photo and see what that looks like. And that's the cool thing. There's so many different styles that we can play around with until we get the exact result that we're looking for. Yeah, I think that might be too much. Too photorealistic, right? It is very yeah. photorealistic. Let's try layered paper again. We're all roasting Howard's bad spelling. If you've watched my streams in the past, you know my spelling is just not great when I'm streaming. It's not great in general, but I mean, when you're streaming, it's like a hundred. It's like for me, everything ends up getting spelled wrong. That's true. <laughs> it's the lights. <laughs> Ooh, this is looking really interesting. I like that. It might be blending a bit too much with the background, but we're getting somewhere, right? Yeah. And that's all part of the design process. Things are just kind of building on top of each other, and eventually, once you start adding things like strokes and changing up the uh, blend mode a little bit. You're going to get somewhere. So maybe down at the bottom, I might want more of an orangey something or other. And maybe at the top, maybe a bit lighter. Still don't love it. But I mean, for it's starting a few to minutes. Look, I mean, very interesting. And I think what's really nice about this is that um, while text to image provides you with a full composition, being able to take it right into Photoshop gives you the ability to kind of really elevate your creativity level by making something new and building upon it. Yeah. I mean, that's what's really cool about this is that could we have gotten this from just doing text to image? No, it's the combination of all of these different things coming together, providing you with the ingredients you need in order to be creative and try something new. Yeah. Let's see. I'm thinking it could be interesting to display this album once it is finished. I, I certainly wouldn't consider this finished, but it could be interesting to display this kind of like in a product shot, right? Yeah. Um, so if we do something like maybe an isometric shot of a of a blank, uh, what would it be? Album cover. Yeah. Cover on a neutral. Gray background. So we're going to do something like that. It did choose art for this one because I didn't specify maybe like a photo, for example. So we might have to, although it's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty darn good. Could, like this one over here could <laughs> Definitely work. Definitely very or usable. Or maybe even this one. Yeah. Let's try photo and see what happens. And then the idea is we can bring this into Photoshop and then we can convert the album art to a smart object and then have some fun with that. So let's go ahead and grab this one. It's pretty basic, but of course we can continue to uh, have some fun with that if we wanted to. But I'm going to pop this in here. And then what I want to do here is convert this entire thing into a smart object. Not only so that I can continue editing this and it's going to automatically update, but we can then pop it onto our album, right? So I can go ahead and grab all these layers. Now, we didn't use this one, or we did use that one. Okay. So I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to right click and then convert to smart objects. So if you're not familiar with smart objects in Photoshop, what it's doing now is it's taking all the original pixels of all these layers and it's combining them into essentially an embedded document almost, right? So it's preserving it. What's really nice about this 
is if I go ahead and let's say transform this all the way down and accept, typically if I were to make this larger again, it would be all pixelated and blurry. But because it's a smart object, let me move this back over here, it's all nice and crispy, which is great. So I can copy this, paste it over here, and then resize it. Now you might be wondering, how do I get it over on the actual album, right? I could move this around and kind of tweak it into place. But if you hold down your Command key or Control key on Windows, I can move these points. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Shift that over. And because I have that kind of cloud over there, it gives an interesting look. It's it, a bit of a depth look, right? It does. It kind of has, I mean, it looks very purposeful. Yeah. It was a happy accident. I totally did that on purpose. It's like <laughs> the Bob Ross happy little tree accident. Yeah, there we go. And we can dive in here and maybe add an inner shadow or a bevel in the boss just to make it kind of look like it belongs. On, not that bevel in the boss, that's for sure. <laughs> Reset to default. Right, it's got a little bit of bevel at the top. I don't know if this works with the actual album, but I'm gonna run with it. And anytime I need to, I can double click on the smart object, open it up, I can maybe move this cloud over. And so you can continue editing this and then it's reflected back mm -hmm. in your other um, composition. It. Yep, and that's, a, that's awesome. Goes, right? But I do like that cloud over here, so I'm gonna save that and pop it back over there. And just like that, we've Made an album cover. Made an album cover. That now, of course, of it's not the most attractive looking album cover. I but don't know. There's some attractive qualities there. It's good lighting. It's, it's okay. <laughs> but I'm sure many people in the chat will do a much better job. But being able to generate individual assets using Firefly, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So are we ready? I think so. We <laughs> gave each other the look at the exact same time. I think it's time um, to demo something new and fancy. Now, I will add the disclaimer that this is very much in exploration. Um, it's a beta. It's a beta of a beta, right? It is the earliest beta that could exist, honestly. The earliest. <laughs> so it could break, my computer could explode. We don't know what's gonna happen. You are getting the earliest sneak peek available to this audience today. You are seeing things before a lot of other people have seen it. Like, mm -hmm. really, most people. Kind of exciting. Yeah. So if we hop over to my screen one more time and we scroll down, this is on the public site right now. One of the first features, or the first feature, is in-painting. Now, what is in-painting? In-painting is basically the ability to be able to uh, isolate a particular area in a shape within a composition or image, and then use a very similar text-to-image prompt, like you would in text-to-image, but so that it actually conforms to that space that you have, um, you've actually indicated in the image. So I think it's better shown than talked about, but it's a really, really fun feature. Yeah, and there I, there have been so many times where I'm either working on a photo composition or I've taken a photo out in the real world. I know, it's terrifying out there. But, um, and I, I get to my computer, I'm like, I love the image, but I wanna replace this. Yeah. Or I wanna, you know, tweak a few things. Or something has not enough legs or too many legs, as, you know, Oliver mentioned in the chat earlier. And we wanna, you know, fix the photo instead of generating an entire new image. And personally, I'm really excited about a feature like InPainting because it allows you to just fix things or add things to your existing workflows, right? So I'm gonna hop over to this tab over here. Again, beta, so this is not available to the general public just at the moment, but I'm gonna switch over to Finder and I have this image from Adobe Stock. This image here, right? Beautiful image, but you might be in a situation where you're a photographer, you've taken an image, and maybe your client or just yourself might think, you know what, this sign over here, a little bit difficult to read. Let's put a cat there. Why not, right? Why not? What kind of cat, though? I don't know. Let's find <laughs> out. So I'm going to drag this image into here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I've got some brush options down at the bottom, so we can control the brush flow, the brush hardness, the brush size. We're gonna keep everything at the default for now. And I'm all, all I'm gonna do is just paint over the sign. And I'm not being super careful because what's really cool about these features is that not only is it gonna replace that sign with whatever I put in the text box down at the bottom, but it's also gonna look at the image. It's gonna look at the shadows, the lighting, the surrounding areas. So even though I've deleted, I'll delete some of the other, you know, the wood in the background, it's gonna replace that wood if the cat doesn't fill the entire, 
And this certainly, this blob doesn't certainly look like a cat, right? So let's go for, what kind of cat should we do? Maybe a Siamese cat? I, I, You're gonna make me spell Siamese? <laughs> fluffy cat? A fluffy cat, okay. How about fluffy cat? A fluffy cat. I can't even spell roasting. Oliver is suggesting that the cat have five legs. Let's just see oh, if we Oliver. can get four legs at first. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> so here we go. And it's gonna give us, in a few moments, assuming everything works properly, uh, four different options, which is really cool. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Look at that. So there's one, there's two. No, th this has two, <gasps> two tails. Two tails. You there didn't you go. get just five you, legs, but you got two tails. Just for you, Oliver, <laughs> right? Oh, I like this. Yeah. And so you purposefully kind of uh, deleted or, you know, outpainted this um, this object that was already in the scene, but yep. what if you wanted a cat in a specific shape? Mm. Like sitting down versus standing right. up. Could you... Oh, now that's cute. Oh, that is cute. Yeah, so I can definitely, a fluffy orange cat sitting, right? Yeah. And I can do that. And we can go around this entire image and start getting rid of things or replacing them with something. Oh, I like that one. Uh, yeah. I feel like they just get better and better. I know. There's a little bit of, um, you know, funkiness over here, but that's easy to take care of. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And then on this side, let's go ahead and grab, let's get rid of this plant thing. And maybe we wanna replace this with a cactus, for example. I don't know why. Oh, but. I was thinking you were gonna just make an entire room full of cats. Oh, I mean, so. we could do that. <laughs> maybe, maybe a cactus would be good though. We've got the fluffy cat, we add a little bit of contrast and texture. You can do a cactus sitting on a, or a cat sitting on a cactus. You could. A it cactus. <laughs> no. You make these weird jokes while, you're, while things are generating, right? That's why we need generating music. Oh, that'd be fun. Yes. Look at that. Oh, I like that cactus. And again, this That's kind great. of shows what I was talking about. It's looking at the shadows and it looks like it belongs here. It, I love the fact that it actually took the pot and it, it really feels like it's taking cues from the fact that the other pots within the image are like this kind of bright um, rounded shape and it, yeah. it mimicked that as well for the cactus. Yeah. And let's do one more on this image down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna purposely select some of this carpet down here, just to kind of show you all that it's looking at the image and it's going to fill in some of the car carpet. So let's just do like an urn. Get a little bit dark. Chat seems to be liking it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Is there an ETA for release? Uh, Soon-ish, oh. we're working on it. Yeah, we're hoping that it'll be soon. We're really excited about this feature. I mean, it's come a long way really quickly and there's just a lot of potential for it. Yeah, and I broke it. It looks like urn might not work. Maybe we think of another word for urn. Um, a large pot? Vase? Oh, a vase, yeah, that could work. I guess it didn't like that. Maybe, is it thinking, thinking, thinking? It seems to, yeah. Immediately when I typed in urn, it's like, no. <laughs> Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah, that's a cooking pot. It is a cooking pot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think a vase is probably uh, more accurate for what we put in a place like this. No urn, yeah, no urn. Some of the engineers are probably watching this like, why would you choose an urn? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, the only thing. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, right. I mean, this is looking pretty cool. Yeah, but like let's... the potential for this, I mean, you could almost completely transform the entire image at a certain point. You could, you really could. And if you want to have a little bit of fun with things, like if you have this cute little dog here, and you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but maybe you want to put sunglasses on this dog, right? So I'm just going to draw out, I'm going to make sure to leave a little bit of room for maybe larger sunglasses, just to give, there we go. And then wearing, sunglasses. Let's see what happens. And what's nice is it's gonna give you four options. So you might have a variety of sunglasses, maybe larger frames or smaller frames or who knows. We could make them futuristic glasses. Yeah, ooh, maybe. Oh, I, I like mean, this. look at that. <laughs> so the potential, especially when you start with a cute dog photo is really infinite. It is, it really is. Wearing futuristic. And after this, we'll do one more example, possibly. Um, or you can take over and have some fun with it as well. I mean, I, I don't even know how I'm gonna top 
<laughs> futuristic glasses I mean, on yeah. a Shibu, she, Shiba Inu. I'm not sure about that one. That one doesn't quite look... We're getting a little bit into the weird and wild. Oh, I kind of like that. Oh, goggles. Mm. Can we put a hat on this dog? Oh, okay. How do we go back to... Will this give us... No, okay. So we'll wait for this one to go through again. Then we can put a hat on him. Um, and then I'll show one more example, possibly. But I would love to hear in the chat how you all would use something like this. Um, just to kind of gauge what you're all looking for. So if we wanted a hat. Is there a specific kind of hat we might want to do? I don't do? know, what do you like think? Like a cowboy hat or a party hat. We could do a sombrero. Hmm. We could do a... Let's try a cowboy hat. We don't have much room at the top. Oh, actually, we do have room. I was zoomed in a little we bit. Might be able to give it a little bit more space. Yeah. But maybe, maybe it puts like a little tiny hat on it. Let's see. <laughs> maybe. Matrix Neo sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, that's oh a pretty gosh. good job. Yeah, that was it's pretty good. That one, not bad. That one's pretty good. Yeah. See, it adds shadows and it kind of recognizes the fur. I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed that the ears are not like sticking out. <laughs> it makes sense that they're not, but I kind of wanted that. Uh, where should we, should we add that in? Maybe let's see what happens when you add in the ears. Ears sticking out. Might as well have some fun. And it's unexpected. I have no idea what this thing's gonna be. Yeah, Kim is asking, does it only fill? in where you erase. I believe so, right? I believe so, yeah. So if we wanted a bigger cowboy hat, we would probably want to go ahead and erase out more area. Though it does take a little bit of liberty sometimes. Ooh, I like the one with, that, that's pretty good right there. Yeah, these are fun. Yeah, maybe, can you try erasing like a larger area and see if we get a larger yep. cowboy hat just to test out that particular question. Yeah, let me go ahead and bump up the size of the brush and yeah, let's like make it a big area. There we go. That's a pretty big hat. Wearing a cowboy hat. Let's see what we get. I feel a little bit like a magician when we're, when we're doing I know. this stuff. It's like abracadabra what's going to come out of this. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what that thing is on the left, but. Yeah, it does seem to have taken some liberties there, but it is a Ooh. much larger hat. Oh, that, that's actually that, looking really good. That one looks good. That's not bad. And what's really cool about this one, I don't know if all of you notice, but right at the bottom here, there's actually reflections, like a yellow reflection, almost like a fill light. Yeah. Because it noticed that the background is yellow. How does it do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. That's the magic of uh, what uh, the uh, really talented Adobe engineers do behind the scenes. Yeah, even this one has a bit of yellow on it. I don't question the amazing magic. I just accept it. And, That's true. And try to enjoy it. <laughs> so one more example. We've got this over here, a beautiful photo of food. But you might want, for whatever reason, the salad is too healthy, right? Too, or, too healthy? I don't know. Why order a salad? That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Or you just might want to replace it with maybe a bowl of fruits, which is also healthy, I suppose, right? You can make it soup. Or you can make it ice cream. Ooh. That's, that's how I would want to replace my salad is with ice cream. That's true. All right. Bowl of ice cream. I wonder if it rejected the urn prompt because it was too short. It was only two words. We'll have to probably look into that one. That's one we should definitely ask the folks behind the scenes yeah. and find out what the what the secret is there. Mm -hmm. Vanilla I ice mean, cream. I'm gonna be. I, I, it's actually just about lunchtime for me, and now I might have to get some vanilla ice cream with my sandwich. Th I mean, this looks like it just belongs here. It does. It really just kind of morphed right into that space. That's wild. It is wild, and it. Yeah, I mean, there's even the salad there. It should be salad, but it's not. It's ice cream. We changed lunch just like that. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if we could really do that in real life? 
very quickly. I'm stuck on this urn thing. <laughs> Are you going to try another urn? I just want to add one more word to it, just so it's more than two words. Like maybe a shiny urn or a, a like a vintage urn? urn? Let's see. See what happens. Oh, it's doing it. So it could have been because there was only two words. It may have been that. Because I know in the text to image generator, you have to have more than two words. You have to have three or more. Yeah. Well, there you go. You got like an urn now. So that it was, that's the culprit there is that being more descriptive is helpful in actually rendering the image. It's even reflecting the rug. Oh, wow. That's wild. Yeah. It's doing a really nice job there. And there's our fruit. Look at that. Yeah, again, to me, a little bit more in painting the is cream. the features that, one of the features that I'm really excited about. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on this and to use it in everyday workflows because I mean, I could, the possibilities are endless. There's so many potential applications for it. And yeah. um, we're hoping to get this out soon. Like tomorrow? I don't know if I, we, <laughs> no, I don't think anybody's tomorrow. gonna make any promises there. No, it's definitely not tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to wrap things up. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. This was Thank a lot of fun. Yeah. It was uh, making album art. I mean, like, how much fun is that to do that over, you know, an, an hour during the day? I mean, design is so much fun. I know. And I don't know about you, but these tools really start to ramp up my creativity. Yes. Because it just allows me to go in so many different directions that I really couldn't go before. Yeah. I mean, it's it's almost like being a kid again in some ways. I know. You know, being able to just magically come up with things and see them appear. Um, it's like bringing your imagination to life right there on the screen. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Good words to end with. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.